Bucharest, Romania. I come from a non-dancing family. Nobody in my family did any sort of arts or anything like that. I remember my first dance class. I think I was very confused with left and right. So I didn't know which side for at the bar, which one it was supposed to start and which leg it was supposed to go front and all of that. But I liked the atmosphere because all the girls were very, um, uh, you know, it was like silence and you could only hear the music and it was a different sort of, you know, atmosphere, much calmer, much, there was a sort of respect for the art form, even if we were like very small, but compared to kindergarten where everybody screams, it was something very different. So I really liked that. Yeah. made me want to dance. I don't really, I don't, I can't say that, I started ballet at four, so I was very young. Um, I can't say that straight away I liked it because um, I remember, I always say this, I'm not a very fle flexible person, so my teacher used to push me a lot and I didn't like that at all. I started crying, I didn't go for a while. Um, and then I came back and got to do a real show on a real stage. And I think that's what I liked and kept going ever since. I trained in Bucharest until I was 15. And then I did the last two years of school in Russia. I participated in YGV, in Youth America Grand Prix, um, in Paris, uh, where I won silver. And I got invited to go to Bolshoi in Moscow for the school to study, and that's how I got there. I think at, at the time it did feel very different because obviously I wasn't at home and it was the first time I went away to a foreign country with not knowing the language or anything like that. Um, but now after living for so long in UK, it, it really wasn't that different. Moscow to Romania, they're very similar in a lot of ways in mentality and traditions and all that. But the school and the students and the respect towards arts and culture in general in there was much, much bigger than what I was used to. And that's what I hope I, I took from studying there. After I graduated in Bolshoi, I actually needed to do my final exams for the academics part of the school um, for another year until I passed the exam. And so while I was, I went home, I thought I should just try and audition for the company, for the main company. And I auditioned for the, for, uh, the Romanian National Ballet uh, with Johan Coburg and got in and 
I spent my first year and my first professional year there. The National Opera was for me um, like a dream to get in um, because, you know, when you're in school and you're small and you aspire and you see all the principal barininas and spending their time in the theater in the changing rooms and all of that is, I wanted that like forever. So for once that was, that was something amazing. And I was home, um, which I haven't been for the last two years. So I was very happy to be with my family, back with my friends. And Johan gave me a lot, a lot of opportunities, which I'm very, very grateful. I got to dance Kitri in Don Quixote, um, Concerto TSCH by Radmansky. I did theme and variations with Pat Neary. So I got to dance a lot and I, I learned a lot about myself in that one year. And yeah, those are my lovely memories. <laughs> After Johan leaving um, uh, from Bucharest, I thought I, I, I just I wanted to leave as well. I, I've always wanted an international career and I always knew I wanted to leave Romania. So, of course, the very first company I thought about was English National Ballet because Alina was here as well. And so I auditioned um, in Paris while they were touring with Corsair. Um, in Palais Garnier and I took class with the company and yeah I got my first contract here and I was in London a week later yeah the very first thing I got to learn when I came to London was contemporary dance um, because uh, in Romania by that point I've I haven't done before also in Russia I haven't learned any sort of contemporary so it was a completely new language for me and I think I, I kind of struggled in the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, uh, straight into Akram's Giselle. What was difficult? I just had no idea what, what contemporary dancing was, basically. I didn't know you're supposed to be more grounded or you're supposed to use your, your body much more um, or your breath. Um, I just never done those things before and I just, by watching and, you know, working and doing more um, contemporary repertoire, I got to learn. Um, so that was my first challenge when I came to London, <laughs> to learn contemporary. And it's something I got to learn and love um, a lot, which I never believed um, when I was younger. Um, I got to do Fina Bausch in my first season um, right of spring it just opened like a door for me um, to believe in myself that I can actually learn something new even if you have doubts or anything like that and the Olivia goes to Francesca Velico <laughs> I was on tour um, to New Zealand, actually, and I woke up because the, this side of the world was, you know, the time difference. And I woke up to all of these messages from my family, from my friends, you got nominated for an Olivia Award. Obviously, I was like absolutely shocked because um, that just doesn't happen. Um, and yeah, no, I was really excited to go and watch the show usually for the Olivia and see all the actors and meet them. And I had absolutely no idea, of course. I was the youngest probably in, the, in there. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful for the award. It's an amazing achievement. But I would say the real achievement was the whole learning process and dancing the role and working with the with the Pina team. After learning a bit of contemporary and um, learning different style of dances, um, I got to dance some soloist roles in Swan Lake, Pas de Tra, um, Princess Florine in Sleeping Beauty, Odalisks in Corsair, and the biggest one, Sugar Plum, <laughs> in my second season. Um, 
And this year, I got to dance with Isaac Hernandez, which was absolutely amazing. Um, because of the COVID <laughs> situation, we had lots of surprises in terms of cast change. Um, and one of my partners also got injured a few days before my show. And Isaac kindly jumped in and rescued me. <laughs> um, and we honestly, we only had like one rehearsal and then the show was absolutely amazing. All hats off to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was an amazing experience. It was like dancing with like one of your idols. <laughs> I don't think I can name only one achievement or the greatest achievement. There's a lot, a lot of achievements that I, I think I had the opportunity to, you know, to do here. First, first of all, like I said, learning different, different kinds of dance because, you know, I did learn contemporary, but I did different, you know, like I did city larby, we did pina, I did akram, so it's like different sort of techniques to it. I love watching different dancers um, and different people that we have here in the company and not just here in any company in UK that I go to watch. Um, obviously, I, I have the opportunity to see much more here than I would have at home. So I feel like my spectrum of knowledge is, is much more um, bigger. Yeah, I think this, the combination of learning and doing classical ballet and contemporary ballet um, kind of helps one another. Um, I kind of dance better now that I know contemporary and vice versa. And I think that's, that's the, the best thing for me here, yeah. I would love to dance Giselle, Odette, Odile, um, Juliet, Manon, Nikia, all of them. <laughs> as a person and also as a ballet dancer, because I feel like it's the same thing. Um, I think I am very passionate and once I'm passionate um, by something, I'm very dedicated to it. I believe and I try to be as honest as I can as a person and as a dancer. I think that's my strength. Um, I always try to do everything as real as I can be and talk to people as real as I can be and always share my feelings, whatever they may be. Um, and that's one thing I hope I won't lose in the future. <laughs> I feel like nowadays um, contemporary dance is obviously much more um, important in the ballet world. Um, all the companies do contemporary dance compared to 10, 20 years ago. Personally, I'm, I'm a dancer that enjoys both. Obviously, ballet is always going to be my number one passion, but I also love um, contemporary. And I think Tamara did a very good job maintaining this balance for ENB. We do exactly the amount that personally I would, I would like to do in terms of classical and contemporary. So I would, I would just keep it that way, yeah. Throughout my whole career, uh, of course, would be my, my mom's advice um, because everything kind of started with her believing in me. Um, she always told, um, used to tell me, if you don't believe in yourself first, nobody will. So I always kind of try and think about that whenever I hit a hard wall. <laughs> um, also, I got a very good um, advice from Billy Forsyth recently because we've just worked with him. Um, and he said to us, let the dance fulfill your needs. And I thought that was amazing. <laughs>